So you see, pay attention to what we are discussing finally today. This is the final discussion we're going to have in restoring divine order. Pay attention because you're going to learn something that is very helpful. And we are going to be praying. This morning, after I had got up and prayed, around 7 a.m., I just, you know, fell off asleep again. And a man was standing in my presence and asking me, when are you going to restore me? He was asking me that question, and I got up. When are you going to restore me? And I want to ask all of you, when will you talk to God and say, restore me? How many of you are really saying to the Most High, restore me completely? Restore me completely. The man was asking me this question. He made that statement two times. And I got up. When are you going to restore me? Jesus gave the parable of that woman that came to the unjust judge. Even though that man don't fear God, nor respect anyone. But the woman kept asking and asking and asking. And the judge acted on her behalf. Don't get tired of her. Hallelujah. Okay, tell your neighbor, neighbor, you need restoration. You need restoration. Hallelujah. Now, in our discussion, we stopped, we stopped here last week. And we stopped at understanding the signs of greater empowerment. Romans chapter 8, verse 26 and 27. Can we get a brother with a strong voice to read for us? You are a brother. And you have a strong voice. We don't want a female voice. We want a brother and a strong voice. No, no microphone so that we can see the strong voice. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> All right, give a microphone, please. Yes. Romans 8, 26 and 27. The book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 26 and 7. Yes, sir. No microphone. <laughs> <laughs> okay. use, use the microphone. Go ahead. Likewise, Likewise the Spirit also helps in our weakness. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weakness. Likewise. For we do not know what we should pray. For we do not know what we should pray. For as we ought. As we are, but the Spirit Himself, but makes, the Spirit Himself makes intercession for us. Makes intercession for us with groanings, with groanings which cannot be uttered, which cannot be explained. Now, now, he who searches the heart, he that knows the heart, knows what the mind of the Spirit knows the mind of the Spirit because. Because he makes intercession for he the saints. He is making intercession for all saints. According to the will of God. According to the will of God. Say to your neighbor, neighbor. Yeah. Many times yeah. you don't know what to pray. <laughs> yeah. Because we only pray about those things that we can feel. Those things that are affecting us right away. Those are the things we pray about. So you actually may think you know what you are praying for. But if you go deeper in the spirit, you realize you don't know what you are praying for. Why? Because many times in our prayers, we treat the symptoms and not the real problem. You get what I mean? That's why when you go to the doctor, they say run a check. Because there can be one million reasons why you're having a headache. There can be a hundred reasons why your, your neck is painful. So run a test so that they will find out the real problem. They will not just give you Panadol. <laughs> but if you are like me, you just go and get Panadol. <laughs> and kill the pain first. But the pain is not the problem. The pain is the symptom of the problem. And this is...
is the same way it is spiritually. Many times the things we are praying for are not the very reasons we should pray. And so we do not know what to pray. But it says the spirit. Somebody say the spirit. The spirit. That is the importance of the spirit. If you are a believer without the Holy Spirit, you have issues. If you believe but you have not come to walk with the spirit, you have issues. Because the spirit is the only one that helps. Without him, you can do nothing. I can tell you, without the Holy Spirit, my preaching is useless. My singing is useless. My dancing is nonsense. Without the Holy Spirit. The Bible says without him, we can do nothing. Tell your neighbor, neighbor. Without the Holy Spirit, you can do nothing. That's what the word says. Without him, we can do nothing. Because we don't know actually what to pray. But when he steps in, when the Holy Spirit steps in, he will move into supplication. And when you move into supplications, the Bible says you get into words without simply physical, natural understanding. Words that your natural mind will not catch up with. You groan from the depth of your soul. How many of you have prayed to the point that you are just crying and, and you know, sobbing and deeply, almost as if you can say nothing more, but you know that within you, your soul is saying too much that you cannot begin to say. Yeah. But you are in prayer yet. Yeah. That's when your prayer has gone beyond just the natural mindset. Beyond just the feeling. You must get beyond feelings. Feelings are for children. Feelings are for babes. You must get beyond feeling and begin to look for the root of everything around you. Adults, grown-ups, go for the root of things. Children, look for feeling. So this is where we stopped last time. Right? We stopped here. And that is the importance of spiritual empowerment. Have you been empowered by the Spirit? Do you have the Holy Spirit within you? Last time I remember in one of our teachers, I said to you, once you receive the Messiah, the Holy Spirit comes in. The question is, do you understand that he is there? Do you understand what he has come to do? One of the reasons why he comes is not only to cleanse you. Yes, he is the one that cleanses you. But he does not stop there. After he has done the cleansing, he begins to empower you. But the problem is sometimes we don't want these empowerments. Because sometimes it comes with serious, difficult things. And so we are scared of it. We reject it. The empowerment comes with you. Changing your friendship. Changing the things you wear. Changing the things you eat. It comes with you not eating as you used to eat. It begins to make you reject food and fast. The Holy Spirit empowerment comes with you changing the things you talk about. Oh yeah, it transforms you. That's actually the name, Transformation Assembly. You are changed from who you used to be. That's what it means. The spiritual empowerment must bring change. If there is no credible change, then it's not right. When you study the Bible, the Church of Corinth is one of the examples of a mixture of Holy Spirit, you know, glory with worldly influence. The Church of Corinth is a mixture of coffee and milk so to say it is a church filled with spiritual gifts manifested yet filled with worldly influences in fact some of the things that happened in Corinthian church were so bizarre that Apostle Paul says take that man and hand him to the devil 
Think about it. To the point that Paul was so angry, he said, the man that has done this thing, hand him over to Satan. No need to. Just give him to Satan. Tell Satan to deal with him. If I hand anybody over to Satan, what will you do? <laughs> no, nobody will come to church anymore. But that's what Paul did. He says, take that man and hand him over to Satan. That's an amazing thing. But this was a church where prophecy was flowing everywhere. The, the gift of prophecy was so much that Paul says, okay, take it easy. You guys prophesy two by two. Because everybody was prophesying. You hear, Paul says the Lord, Paul says the Lord, Paul says, Paul, take it easy. Take it easy. Take it one by one. And let there be some people to judge whether what you are saying is actually Paul says the Lord or God says your stomach. The flow was heavy. But then, there was a mixture of carnality. So that Paul started to tell them, how can Christ now be a fornicator? How can Christ now be a thief? How can Christ be an idolater? Do you not know that if you have received Christ, you have become Christ? Because that Christ now dwells in you. And he says to them, it is no longer you that live, but Christ that liveth his life in and through you. This is why when you say you have become a Christian, you must know what you are saying. You are now saying Christ is living his life through me. Through me. That's what you are saying. And if you can understand this, beloved, your life will change. Because even when Satan comes out physically and says, see you, I'm going to kill you today. You will laugh at him and go your way. You will not be moved. Because you know he cannot kill you. Even when all the devils that rule this city will come against you, you will laugh and keep moving. Because you know that they cannot do you nothing. Why? Christ is living through you. That's what that passage that says, he that is in you is greater than he that is in the world. Will make sense to you. Yeah. Yesterday while we were praying, we read a place where in Psalm 27, David says, even though war breaks out around me, yet I will be confident. I will be confident. I will be confident. When you know what it means that Christ is living in you, your life will change. Yeah. You will not go to some places. You will not say some things. There are certain things you will avoid. You know that your word is powerful. Especially when you say them with all your heart. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. So you have received the Holy Spirit. What does that mean? He wants to empower you. If he is in you, he wants to empower you. Why does he want to empower you? Simple reason. He needs more soldiers. So take that for instance. We are in a system which we have the kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness. And these two are at war. What does the Holy Spirit do with every believer? He begins to clean them up. After he cleanses you up, he begins to fill you with faith. Why is he filling you with faith? Because without faith, it is impossible to please God. How are you going to please God? Apostle Paul says, he that is enlisted in the army fights to please him that has enlisted him. So when you think of pleasing God, think about a soldier that is fighting to please his commander-in-chief. And who is your commander-in-chief? Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Your commander in chief. So he is empowering you to walk as a man that is not afraid. So that when you stand to pray, you pray with faith and believe your prayer. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. So today, I want you to know that you have started to go through a very strong and high level of empowerment that is important that you know. You must know. Because if you don't know that you are going through empowerment, you will always be afraid. And remember, 
Fear is your enemy. Fear will make the Holy Spirit not walk through you. Fear. Fear walks with doubt. Whenever fear steps in, doubt will take over. And the Bible says a man that doubts is like one that is bouncing off and on, off and on. And he says, let that man not think he can receive anything from the Lord. So this is why you must not allow fear. Because once fear steps in, doubt will come in. And doubt is your greatest enemy. Empowerment. Why am I talking about this? Because this is very important. Now look at the next. Once there is a sign that you are being empowered, you got to know what are you being empowered for. Number one, when the Holy Spirit comes in, He's empowering you so as to bring you into the spiritual realms directly, where you can begin to communicate with the Father directly. One of the biggest mistakes we have made in the church is not teaching this one truth, one single truth, one single truth, which is you can be your own deliverer. You can pray for yourself and receive your healing. The reason for the Holy Spirit to be in all of us and not just in the high priest or in the prophet only, this is what changes in the New Testament and in the Old. Forgive me for saying New Testament and Old. You know, I don't believe in New Testament and Old Testament as a Bible. I believe that it, it is one Bible. God did not make that division. I have said this before. God did not divide it Old and New Testament. Uh -uh. Translators divided it just for easy understanding and reading. But that scripture continues. In fact, Chronicle is going on. It's just that the physical scripture is stopped. But as I'm talking to you now, in heaven, chronicling is still going on. Events are still being written. Everything we have done in Hong Kong in the past 31, 32 years is chronicled down. It is written from the very day I stepped into this city. As a servant of Mosai, I came in. Everything that I have done in secret and in the open, those that please God and those that didn't please God. It is chronicled in heavens. Hallelujah. Chronicling has not ended. And so you got to be careful because everything is being written down. Of course. So what the Holy Spirit does for you is that he brings you into close connection. I don't know the phone line you are using. In Hong Kong, some phone lines don't have very excellent connections. Mm. You know only when you climb the mountains. You are like me that go for climbing. Whenever I get up to the mountain, my phone will get to one bar, sometimes no bar at all. And that is when I realize that Sun Mobile is not Sun yet. <laughs> Internet is Saikon. Before it's only PCC of me, nobody else comes in. Most of the towers belong to them. This is what the Holy Spirit does for you. When you read the book of Numbers and you see how Balaam and Balak were getting up to higher mountains in order to get a closer connection. You think these things have changed? They have not changed. They know that the higher you go, you can get a connection. They know that there are places where there is what they call signal. Signal or portal. We use the word portal in biblical terms. Portal, where you can easily connect spiritually faster. So Balak and Balaam started to go from one mountain to another, one mountain to another, one mountain to another, just that they will have easy and faster connection to release a curse, and the curse will go after Israel. One mountain to another. Many of you don't climb mountains, but like me that I do climb in many, I have seen that in many of the mountains there are altars. Most of the mountains you find in Hong Kong, both in, in, in uh, 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 airport area, I've gone there, you know, Chungwan, Saikong. Wherever you go, you will find a very strong altar. Why? 
men of old, people of old, know the use of mountain. They know the use of it. But this is what the Holy Spirit is for us. He is that connection. When he is in you, whether you are in the valley, whether you are inside the sea, do you know Jonah was inside the belly of the fish? And yet from there he spoke to God and there was an easy connection. He did not need to say, where, where, where can I get connection? <laughs> easy connection in the belly of the fish, in the deep sea. This is what the Holy Spirit does for you. Men in prison. I remember one of the brothers we, we used to visit in prison. And one day, I was moved to go to the prison and tell him God is making you an evangelist in the prison. Unknown to me, I didn't know that the Holy Spirit was already ministering to him. But he cannot read and write. So I came and I said to him, my brother, God is making you an evangelist. In this prison, you begin to preach. You begin to tell people about Jesus Christ. He said, Pastor, last night I was feeling it. But Pastor, I cannot read. I cannot read. I can hold the Bible now, but I cannot read. And I said to him, all you need is the Holy Spirit. If he comes, you will see yourself reading and writing. He said, me read and write. I said, you will read and write. After a few months, I got a letter from him. And in the letter, of course, there are so many errors. <laughs> many errors in his grammar. But he was so happy that he could pick up a pen and write by himself. Not anybody writing for him. But he wrote by himself. How did that happen? Holy Spirit. What am I trying to tell you? I don't want to just tell you things that are too far away. This, this is happening here in this city. If you have the Holy Spirit, you have that connection. The Bible says it connects us spiritually to the higher spiritual realms and brings us into direct communication with the Father. Now, I am beginning to get closer to what we call the gift of tongues. How many of you have heard about the gift of tongues before? Okay, you see people and they say things and you don't understand what they are saying. Sometimes some of you are scared, right? Okay, like when Minister Collins will hold the microphone and he will step, you will be with me. And some of you are going, wow. <laughs> Sometimes he would not even know when he is stepping so hard like that. Do you know that? Sometimes he doesn't, he didn't say, okay, now I'm going to step. No, 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 no. There's nothing like that. No plan, no nothing. But there is a move happening spiritually that is now controlling the physical the holy spirit once it begins to energize you makes you do certain things that some people around will be wondering what is going on but this energizing is so important that you can't do with it if you are not energized, there are things you cannot do. How can a man run faster than a chariot? Can you imagine that? A man run faster than a chariot. Yes. But Elijah ran faster than a chariot. Think about it. Asahel will run faster than a horse. Can you imagine that? How can a man do that? But it is the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, you need the empowerment of the Spirit. You do. You do. Your Christianity must get into being empowered by the Holy Spirit. Now, I move fast. There is something else about this empowering of the Holy Spirit. Especially when you begin to pray in tongues. When you begin to pray in tongues, number two, it brings you to the position in the spiritual warfare to battle in a different level that surprises your enemy. Because you will now pray in the direct will of the Most High. You pray directly in the will of Most High. This is why praying in tongues is very important. Because when you're praying with your understanding, remember, Satan and the devils, they know the language. 
There is no language on earth that they don't know. They know every language on earth. The spirits, the demons, they know every language on the face of the earth. But the spiritual language that is given to you by the Holy Spirit is like a direct line without interruption. Yeah. That is what it is. 1990, 1991 or is it 1992, I was in Manila and I went to make a call. In those days you go to PLDT. <laughs> you know? And when you come to the PLDT, it's like a boot. You will first sit down and write who you want to call, and then you wait. And somebody sitting as the operator will do all the connection. Get that phone and it will ring. And they will say, uh, card number uh, five, you are uh, calling Visaya, you go to boot number five, right? And then you go to boot number five and pick up the phone that she has already connected. And no matter what, everything you say, she knows. <laughs> She's the one that connected you online. Everything you are saying is clear, recorded. Because once you are on that phone talking, she's recorded. Somebody say hallelujah. <laughs> that is how our mobile phones are today. You may think that things you're saying on a mobile phone because you're talking, you think it's not known. No, it is known. It's just that there are too many people using mobile phone that they can't record everything. They only have key words in which once it rings, the computer will take notice and begin to track. That's how they catch people, criminals. That it is, conf it is configured like that all over the world. Hallelujah. So everything you say is known. Somebody is listening. Somebody has record of your emails. Somebody has record of your chat. So, nothing is a secret. <laughs> nothing. What I will tell you is encrypted. Don't worry until FBI comes knocking. You will know that the encryption does not go far. <laughs> oh yes. Nothing is a secret. The only thing that remains a secret is the gift of tongues that directs you direct to the Most High God. Nobody can ever break into what you are saying. Only your spirit and the spirit of Most High. Because the Bible says, he that speaketh unto God speaketh what? Mystery. Hallelujah. It puts you in a position where you speak in the other world of God. Number three, the enemy again will feel lost because they can't understand what you are saying. But only the Father and the Mashiach, our Jesus the Christ, knows what you are saying by the Holy Spirit. And then to whoever the Father will give the understanding. Because sometimes after you have prayed, you are asking for something. And then the Father will give understanding of what you are saying to somebody else in order to help you. Number four, it is a great weapon to use in spiritual warfare prayers. In the depth of it, you will receive revelations of how to make declarations and what to declare also. Do you know when you begin to pray in tongues, in many cases, most cases in fact, once you get into the deep, revelations will begin to come to you. You are saying things that you cannot explain with your understanding, but you are seeing the understanding. And sometimes, even what you should pray will begin to come clearer to you. It's an amazing thing. The gift of tongues will always carry revelations. And then you begin to know what to declare, how to declare. Many times, for people that work with gifts of word of knowledge, they would pray in tongues and then revelation will come. So you need the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. In the days we are going into, I was listening to a man from the U.S. that was explaining that they just did another final test for CERN in July. In July. In the days we are going into, when the spiritual barriers of the world will begin to break open. Beloved, you need the gift of tongues to release power, both for your protection and those around you. 
Because you're not going to be looking for a prophet that is far away. You will be praying by yourself wherever you are. <laughs> Hallelujah, somebody. Yeah. So speaking in tongues is also a tool that builds up your spirit and the gifts of Christ that are in you. You see, when you pray in tongues, the gifts that are in you are built up. They are strengthened. They are energized. And your faith rises. Because when you are speaking with your understanding, you will not like to do certain things. Because your understanding will be telling you how dangerous that very thing is. Think about it. Yeah. Your understanding will analyze it. But if you're speaking in tongues, you're not, you, you won't even know what you're saying to even come to analyze it. So praying in tongues is very, very important. According to 1 Corinthians chapter 14, he says, he that speaketh in an unknown tongue, it defies himself. And build up your faith. The reason why our faith fails is because we are not speaking in tongues as we should. If you are a car, praying in tongues is your alternator. How many of you know what is alternator? Alternator is the part of your car that recharges the battery of your car. If your alternator is not working well, the battery of the car will just die. But as long as the alternator is good, the battery of your car keeps being recharged. Each time you start it, once the battery starts your car, that zoom, the battery go on and sleep and recharge itself. The alternator keeps recharging everything. That's the job of alternator. Keep recharging. But if you do not pray in tongues, you do not recharge your spirit. And sometimes you may face a situation that needs a very high voltage. But your voltage is low. You see what happens? Your voltage is low. And by the time you will try to recharge yourself, everything has messed up. Many times you face a demon. And the demon you are facing is a demon that needs 90% charge of your spirit. But you are only 15% charged up. What do you do? <laughs> You see what I mean? Yeah, what do you do? You will only cry. So praying in tongues always from time to time on daily basis is very important because it keeps recharging your spirit. Very important. Because you may face a battle, the kind that Peter faced and Jesus says, Satan has asked of you to deal with you. But Peter can't do nothing about it. It was Jesus that actually prayed for him. Peter had no ability to challenge the kind of incursion that was coming for him. It was Jesus that prayed for him. Are you still here? Amen. Tell your neighbor, 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 you need the empowerment of the Spirit. Amen. So speaking in tongues draws the sword of wisdom. The sword of word of wisdom will always come out. When you speak in tongues, word of wisdom flows. And that is why you can receive ministration that will bring communication and interpret it, what is being received. Number uh, uh, six, it opens up the spiritual veil or door and lets you out. Mm -hmm. Your spiritual man will step out of the veil and assume responsibility so that you can stand on equal footing with the spirits that are after you. If you read Hebrews chapter 10 verse 20, you will understand what I'm saying here. Please, read it, read it for us. Hebrews chapter 10 verse number 20. When you pray in tongues, your spiritual man breaks out of this body veil and can stand on equal footing. You are no more standing as an ordinary man. You stand as a spiritual person. Go ahead and read, sir. Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he consecrated for us through the veil that is his flesh. You break out of the veil, out of the flesh, by boldness. But that can only happen when you are in deep spiritual act. It doesn't just happen. 
It's when you are in a deep spiritual act, especially praying in tongues. In Christianity today, one of the rituals that the old believers had that we can maintain and are maintaining is praying in tongues. And I don't want you to allow anybody to talk you out of it. A lot of people are talking and saying so many funny things. But I tell you, that's why it's called spiritual. Spirit ritual. It's a ritual. A ritual is something you perform. It's an act. It's an act. It's something you perform. Something you do. Are you still with me? So praying in tongues, when you are in the deep part of it, will allow you to break out of this physical veil. You may not understand that part. Okay? Break out of the veil and you can stand on equal footing and challenge any spiritual act. Now, it opens up that spiritual veil for you to do that. Number, uh, the, the, the last one there, it bypasses your natural understanding and thereby eliminate human rationale and doubt. And once you eliminate human rationale and doubt, you will establish faith. All right? Because it brings you into direct communication with the Father, it strengthens your relationship with the Father. Have you seen a child that is always talking with his father? His father will love him. Oh, yeah. See a child that remembers his father from time to time and talks nicely with the father. The father will love that child. See a child that does not remember the father to even call. The father will always feel unhappy. If you are a father, you know what I mean. When you come into your house, your child runs and hugs you. You always remember that child wherever you are. That one that will just sit somewhere and be doing. You are going to come and say, did, did you not see me? Yeah? Hallelujah. It's like that. The more you talk to the father, the more the father is fond of you. So even when you are not asking for anything, the father can come home and bring you a present, a gift. You didn't ask, but he just brought you a gift. Why? He has you in mind. He has you in mind. So that's why the Bible says, delight yourself in the Lord. And he will give you the desires of your heart. You see, that's how it works. This is how it works. All right? So, next, it makes the presence of the Father interesting and inviting. So that you want to dwell there more and more. There are many people that are scared of the presence of God. But there are many that love it much more than food. Oh, yeah. There are some people that will say, I'm going to fast for 100 days. And they're happy doing it. But there are some that will never fast for one day. <laughs> you know what I mean? It makes you love the presence more and more. All right? It releases a different atmosphere over you. In the spirit that translates to the physical. The longer you pray in tongues, the more there are tangible visitations that surely affect the atmosphere around you. And that is true. Learn to pray in tongues more. Believe me, you begin to have more visitations. Angels will begin to visit you more and more. From just giving you dreams, they begin to talk to your hearing. That's how it happens. Do that more and you will see what I'm telling you. It is something I have practiced for a lot of times. And for many, many years. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Next, it breaks off besetting sins and bad imaginations, bad thoughts, and make you a sweet aroma in the spirit and in the natural. The more you pray in tongues, the more besetting sins will not be around you. The more your imagination will be clean. The more it will be clean. It will break them off. You're not going to strive so hard to walk in the commandments. It, it's just natural. Why? Because that spirit that gave the commandment is acting in and through you. Alright? So there are other empowerments released in the believer. Immediately the Holy Spirit is released in that believer. What are some of these empowerments? Number one, he is the spirit of righteousness and therefore will surely lead one to keep the laws and the commandments of the Most High. Okay? 
if the Holy Spirit comes in you, it's natural. If you allow him to rule your life, it is natural. The other time I was preaching and, and somebody was asking, okay, that question came later on. Why did God keep the tree of knowledge of good and evil in the garden? Why? Why didn't God kill that tree? Why did he create it in the first place? But God did not only create that tree, God created it and kept it where man can see it. In fact, it was God that told man what that tree is. And it was God that kept it where man can reach it. Think about it. Think and think deeply. Always God wants to know what your decision will be. God wanted man to make a decision of the route the man is going to take, the way the man is going to take to eternity. Whether man will swing into eternity right away, eating the tree of life. Or man is going to take the longer, the longer road through thorns and thistles and pains. But man chose the longer way with troubles and pains. So, the spirit of God is spirit of righteousness. One, if you allow him, he will lead you. But if you refuse to abide, that's why Jesus says, abide in me. Tell your neighbor, neighbor. Abide in him. Abide in him. If not, your spiritual life will be epileptic. And mechanical. When one, number two, when one stands in obedience, grace will be evident and the gifts will flow without labor because it is the manifestation of the Spirit. When you read in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, it says the manifestation of the Spirit is given. It's, gi it's already given. The word there is given, G-I-V-E-N, given. In other words, it is in the perfect tense already released the manifestation of the spirit is already given to you it's already released to you all you need to do is make yourself available that's all it's already released but are you available <laughs> Sometimes, yeah. <laughs> and that is the truth. Sometimes we are not available. Yes. I see some of the WhatsApp. Uh, I mean, WhatsApp or we call it WhatsApp or WhatsApp. Okay, WhatsApp. Some people will have it there, not available. If you look at their status, right? WhatsApp status. Some people will write, praise God. Some people will say, always available. Some people will say, online. Some people will say, not available. <laughs> Hallelujah. And no matter what you want to do, they are not available. It does not matter if somebody is dying, not available. No matter how urgent the situation is, not available. Come on now. Try to be available. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, switch on your spiritual antenna. Aha. You got to switch it on. Fruitfulness is seen and fruitfulness is contagious. How many of you know that everybody that sees ripe mango is interested in it? I don't know about you, when I used to be a young boy, I used to walk to school from my grandfather's place, you know, to school. Along the way, there are places where there are mango trees. Once that mango is there, each time I am passing by, I will stay for some few minutes. I check if there is any right for one. Because if anyone is right, if you leave it and go, somebody else will. So when you come to that mango tree, you see sticks and you see stones. Because anybody that comes here, if there is any right for one, you know what I mean, right? is contagious fruitfulness is easily recognizable if you see a man if you see a woman that is fruitful you will easily know it cannot be hidden how many of you can hide pregnancy you can only hide it on the first two months by the time it is third month you, you, you your work will change the way you stand will change even the way you talk will change the food you eat will change. Everything will change. You cannot hide fruitfulness. 
productivity cannot be hidden. Hallelujah. 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 How many of you want to be productive? Spiritually and physically. You need the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Now, I'm going to keep you for extra 10 minutes today. If you believe, say, ah. Uh, all of you that don't believe, God bless you. <laughs> I want to finish this. I don't want to go back to this next week. Hallelujah. Please grant me 10 minutes and I'll be done. Now, notice this. Notice this. Even the very most serious angry prophet, John, had disciples. Read the Bible. Most of the prophets, of course, many of them were angry men. That's the truth. Almost all the prophets, you will not find anyone that is not an angry man. All of them were angry men. But one of the most serious amongst them all was John the Baptist. But yet, he had disciples. Why? He was a man that was productive. He was a man that was ripe as a fruit. He was a man that had the spirit of fruitfulness. And fruitfulness is always contagious. Oh yes. Even though he was a man that frowns always, releasing curses, yet the Bible says thousands of people were coming to be baptized. To the point he started to see Pharisees and Sadducees. And he said, ah, oh ye generation of vipers, who has warned you to run and escape from the problem that is coming? Amazing. Think about it. So you need the Holy Spirit. You want to be productive, you need the Holy Spirit. You want a life that is contagious in the positive, you need the Holy Spirit. You need Him. Now, there are certain gifts that the Father placed in the church. And as I'm talking to you, people are still being called into these positions. Some people say, oh, there are no more apostles. That's not true. There are still apostles. It is the Holy Spirit that baptizes. He is the baptizer. So there are still apostles. He's still baptizing men and women. And these are gifts you will find if you go to 1 Corinthians chapter 14. He gives you these full details. He says, first and foremost, the number one is what? Apostle. Apostle is a commissioner. Apostle stands in the position where Moses was standing. How many of you know in the time of Moses, the very first high priest was Aaron. And that word high priest means that he is the one that will mediate between the whole nation and God. But do you realize it was Moses that anointed him? Can you imagine that? The high priest, the only man that can go into the Holy of Holies. Moses was not allowed to go into the Holy of Holies. But this is a man that is the only man that will go into the Holy of Holies. It was Moses that anointed him. It was Moses that told him the design of his clothing. It was Moses that told him how his operations must run. Position of a commissioner. Second, prophet. A man of inspiration. A prophet carries the grace that varies according to the flow of the spirit. A prophet can teach. A prophet can All right? But of course, the commissioner carries the grace for all. Third is the teacher. He carries the grace of pastoring and evangelism all at the same time. A teacher can pastor. A teacher can also evangelize. So Ephesians chapter 4 puts pastor and teacher together. You must go together. Every pastor must be able to teach. Because if you can't teach, it's difficult to pastor. Number four, miracle worker. This is the fourth level according to the scripture. This fourth level miracle worker carries the grace for healing and for help. A miracle worker can meet you and he doesn't have money in his hand. The Bible says, Peter and John said to the man that was crippled, Silver and gold have I none, silver and gold have I none. Silver and gold have I none, silver and gold. You like it? <laughs> ah, glad I was smiling for my singing and dancing. That's nice. That, that may be how they said it, because they didn't speak English. Oh. And that's why I'm speaking it like that. Because there are some ministers you will meet and their English will be zero. Don't ever look down on them because of their grammar. They may not 
have good accent. They may not have American accent. They may be using a very poor English, I mean, command of English. That does not change the gift that is in them. So they may call it a saliva. <laughs> But they said, what we have, we give to you in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. The Bible said the man that was crippled at the gate, called beautiful, got up walking. The whole of Jerusalem broke into two. Did you get that? So a miracle worker may not have money to give you in terms of helping you, but they will help you with the presence of the Holy Spirit that they carry. So this, this, the, 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 this, the fifth is the gift of healing. Gift of healing also carries the grace for help. Not only to heal, but can help you. Sometimes a man with the gift of healing can send you to the hospital. Next is the gift of help. Gift of help comes with the gift of administration. Gift of government is the gift of administration. Next is the gift of tongues. I mean, gift of, uh, gift of government, rather. So gift of government interchange comes with help also because government should be able to help all right government administration you see people that want to make sure that the chairs are arranged very well those that make sure that we have these things prepared you know many of you don't know that some people take time they started yesterday to prepare this communion you are going to take it's gift of government those that make sure that some of these things we are doing are working, recording and all this, is gift of administration. It's all flowing together. Those that are making sure that all these sounds, everything is arranged, is gift of administration. It's just that it's broken into different facets. Hallelujah. And it is by the Holy Spirit. They help. They help to make sure that what we are doing is working. Without people with gift of administration and government, it's difficult for us to come in here and things are in order. Look at the ushers. They have gift of administration. They make sure that people are well seated. Things are done in proper way. This is how it is. These are giftings of the Holy Spirit. It's not only the preacher that has the spirit. No, the usher has it. Those that come to give you this bread and wine, we are going to consecrate people as deacons. It's by the Spirit. The next is the gift of tongues. The gift of tongues carries the grace for revelation and can flow into different kinds of dimensions according to the spiritual flow. Hallelujah. Now, in conclusion, I'm going to ask you, where do you belong in that group? Some of you belong in that group, but you are not yet thinking in terms of that level. But now, there are some groups that we have in this assembly. There are some groups in this functional body. There are some groups that we have in this transmission assembly. Number one, we have teachers. We have adult and children teachers. We hold Bible study every Wednesday, 9.30 p.m. Some of you don't log in. You must begin to log in because there are many things we discuss that you cannot learn just on Sunday, Sunday medicine. <laughs> Hallelujah. Don't be on Sunday, Sunday medicine. It's not good enough. Tell your neighbor it's not good enough. <laughs> the next is the evangelists. We call them the evangelism team. Evangelism team. They go out and they evangelize. From time to time, we have them in this fellowship. The Bible says, he that winneth a soul is wise. Are you telling people about Jesus? You better start to do that now. I have said something to you before. And I will come back to tell you things more about CERN, 5G, and certain things to expect from next year. So that you understand when we talk about telling people about Jesus, you have to take it serious. Because only Jesus will save people. Only the power of the Holy Spirit will save people. So the evangelist. Next is the intercessory prayer warrior. They told us about their team today. Prayer warrior is the pillar of the church. Oh yes, if any church will survive, it is the prayer life of that church. Because the demonic attacks are heavy. For three months now, I've not done anything. Many of you did not understand. I told you how somebody hit me on my chest and my heart stopped moving. My heart ceased. For the next day, I could not stand on my legs. 
I had to declare myself into fasting and prayer and praying, praying, praying until God sent somebody on the second night in my dream to come and give me something I drank that made the whole heat go down. And when I went to the hospital with my wife, the doctor after checking me said, you are just very lucky because you should not, you should be completely paralyzed. I said, not a man like me. Hallelujah. It's not my portion. Yes, no. And you have to say it to yourself. It is not your portion. If you carry the Holy Spirit, you cannot easily be attacked like that and just be brought down like that. No. You are a son of the Most High. You are a daughter of the Most High. You cannot just easily be taken out like that. But that is the importance of praying. We need more people in the prayer team. Yes. Because any church that is speaking the truth of God's word. Anyone. Did you remember Brother Sonny? He said immediately, he said he wants to go deeper and be more serious with God. He started having more attacks. That's how it works. They know you. The spirits know you. Should you now say, okay, no need to be serious with God. Nah. How about going to hell? Nah. <laughs> Yes, because that's the next option. The next option is going to hell. So you better be serious with God. We need more people in the prayer department that will be praying continuously. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The next is the ushering. The ushering. Brother Khan is doing a marvelous work with the ladies that are working with him. But we need more people in that ushering. The reason why I'm saying we need more people in all is because I don't want anybody to be a bench warmer. These chairs, we don't need anybody to warm them up. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You must get into something. Next, arts and design. They make things beautiful in the house. So they need people. Help ministry. Many of you don't know that we have help ministry in this church, but we do. You always see the box that we put out here once a while, you know, for you to drop some money for the help ministry. And they help people. They have helped many people that I know about. We don't come out here to say what you know we do and all that. Blah, 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 blah. No, 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 no. We are not into that because we don't want posting and things that will look like you know pride and all that. No. But we are doing what we should do. Hallelujah. So when you see the offering box for help ministry, drop something there. It is important. Drop something. We have the missions. They plan, you know, how to evangelize in a bigger way and plant churches here and there. Those people in the missions, the other day I understood how they are contributing funds. Right now we are talking about a land in, 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 in San Miguel. We are talking about another land in, in Manila and, and Luzon. The missions ministry want to make sure that there are churches planted where what we do here can be replicated. So we need you to be a part of it. We have the Transformation Assembly Marketplace. That marketplace is important. Let me tell you why. There are businessmen here. Uh, Minister Collins is a businessman. He can teach you a lot about business. Uh, brother. Okay, business again. He's a businessman. Brother Sonny, don't you? Many of them know about business. Many of them know about things you can do, how to do business. The reason is because you need to learn about entrepreneurship. The reason is because you want to move from just being an employee to become an employer. And you can do it even in Philippines. If you know how. That's why we have that ministry. Join. Join. The leader wants you to say you want to join. Just tell the ushers the ministry you want to join. They will get the leader for you. Hallelujah. Sister Yoli, can you stand up and wave your hand? Sister Yoli is leading that department with Brother Geoff. Alright. And finally, we have the worship department, which includes both the tambourine dancers, the musicians, and the equipment. These are all together in that worship department. The tambourine dancers, the equipment people. Do you know without these equipment people making sure that things are working fine here, we can do nothing. Which 
would you belong to? I am saying this because this is a functional body and you must belong to one. You must belong to one. Sister Mercy who used to play on our Saturday Shabbat fellowship, but she also will come and help. That is the heart of service. Without the heart of service, you are not placing yourself in the heart of God. More love, more power, more of you in my life. Sing more love, more love, more power, more power, more of you, more of you in my life. And I will. The prayer point is what? When will you restore me? Father, restore me. I want you to stand with me. I begin to talk to heaven. Say, I want full restoration of your divine purpose in my life. Full restoration. Full restoration. Restoration. Go ahead and begin to pray to God. Say to the Father, restore me, restore me. Let there be a restoration of grace 
Restore my feet, restore my hands. Your feet will carry you wherever you go in this life. It is your feet that will carry you there. But before you can get there, your eyes have to see. Your eyes and your imagination must see it first. And then if you get there, your hands must be productive there. I want you to say, restore me fully. Restore my eyes, restore my imagination, restore my feet, restore my hands. I speak promotion of heaven upon this house. I speak promotion of heaven. I declare promotion of heaven. Hey, restore our feet. Our feet will not lead us to trouble. Our feet will not lead us to temptation. Our feet will not lead us to destruction. Hey, I declare restoration of walking in his righteousness. You will lead us to green pastures. You will lead us to green pastures. You will lead us to steel waters. Ah, restore our eyes to see. Our minds to imagine rightly. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Every wrong imagination. Be wiped out by the blood of Jesus. Be wiped out by the blood of Jesus. Restore our hands. Our hands will gather. Our hands will be strong. Our hands will gather. Our hands will be strong. Our bodies are healed. We thank you, Father. And I invite the ministers to come. 